Okay, so we have here um, examples on probability. So first we have this one. What is the odds of throwing a total of 5 and 10 in rolling two dice? So this will be a mutually exclusive event because we are trying to get a total of 5 and 10. Okay, so first try it will be 5, second try it will be 10. So there is no um, there is no effect on the on the on the um, events of getting a certain outcome. Okay, so we have here our solution. So first, we need to get the probability that five, at least uh, five, will occur. So in if, if we have two dice, so we are going to write the possible outcome of two dice so t1 and t2 here so this will be one two three four five six and this will be one two three four five six so the pro if you are going to throw them at the same time so we, we could get five we, if we have one and four so that will be our first outcome so let's just have that one as I just have that as A. Then we have also two and three. And we could have also three and two. Another one. Then four and one. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four. So we have four possible outcomes or four possible outcomes that the result will be five over so we have six outcomes so six times six that will be 36 and this will be one over nine okay so that will be the prob probability of getting at five then you have the probability of getting 10 okay so let's just have that one in another color so that will be five and five so this will be um this will be this will be in six and four then for four and six okay and so maybe that is the three okay so we have three so three over 36 which is equal to 112 so the probability of getting of getting five and ten total of five and ten so that will be 5 or 10 so that will be we have 1 over 9 plus 1 over 12 and this will be equal to 7 over 36 so the add for p 5 or 10 so this will be p uh, 5 or 10 over 1 minus pi p 5 or 10 so we have 7 over 36 over 1 minus 7 over 36 so if we are going to use our uh, trusted calculator so let's just let our calculator appear on the screen so we have 7 uh, over 36 or over 1 minus 7 over 36 and we have 7 this is now equal to 7 over 29 so that is now the add of getting a p a, a 5 or a 10 in tossing two dice so this will be our answer okay next so we have the number of ways can three nurses and four engineers <clears throat> me. So the number of ways can three nurses and engineers So the number of ways can three nurses and four engineers be seated on a bench with the nurses seated together? Okay, so the nurses are seated together. So we have a solution. 
Okay, so the number of ways that the um, nurses could be arranged is three factorial. This is for the nurses. For the engineers, this will be four factorial. So that is how we could arrange. So this is uh, much more like PE partitioning. Now, if the nurses are um, seated together, therefore, the, the nurses will also act as a one entity. So therefore, we will have five patterns because the nurses will act as one, then we could have the engineers arranged in a certain way. So our pattern here is equal to five. So one as one for the nurses and four for the engineers. So our total number of ways now is equal to 3 factorial times 4 factorial. So this is now um, uh, mutually added. These are, these are now the, uh, the multiplication rule of certain events. Then this will be 5. So we have, we use our calculator. Okay, we have 5 times 4 factorial times 3 factorial. This is now equal to 720. So this will be 720 ways. Okay. So in the engineering board examination, the probability of the probability that an examinee will pass each subject is 80, 0 0.08 or 80 percent. What is the probability that an examinee will pass at least two subjects out of the three board exam subjects? Okay, so we will go directly to the solution. Okay. So the probability that the probability of passing uh, exactly two, so because at least two, no. So you have P two. So we use the by binomial expansion, um, uh, the binomial distribution here. So this will be NCR. Then we have the probability of the first event to occur. And the, probab the probab probability will be n. Sorry for that. This will be n. And the probability of the event not to occur this will be r. So because 2, so this is 2. And c, which this will be. So we have here our n. I believe this is not n here. This will be. Um, the eraser. This will be um, N. This will be R. Uh, this this will be N minus R, and this is N minus R minus one. So let's just check the formula first. Let's just look our notes. Okay. Okay. okay, so n minus r, sorry for that. So this will be r here. So this will be r. This is r and this is n minus r. So sometimes I, I forgot some of the formulas. Okay, now we will just substitute this one. So this will be 3. Then at two, then the prob probability of passing a subject this will be zero point eight to the power of two, and this will be the of not passing the subject that will be point two. So this will be uh, three minus two, and we will have. We now use our um, calculator. Okay, so let's just call upon our calculator so we have 3 ncr2 
times this will be 0 0.8 raised to the power of 2 times 0 0.2 raised to the power of 1 because it is 3 minus 2 so we have 0 0.324 that is 0 0.3384 or 324. Let's just check first. It'll be 384, sorry for that. So this will be 384. So that is the probability of passing at least two subjects. Okay, now if we have three, no? so exactly three also. So you, because at least two so you could have a pa you you could pass all the three subjects or just pass two subjects so we will also get the one we are going to uh, if you are going to pass the three subjects so this will be three our n is three here and our um cr also is three when you have 0 0.8 raised to the power of three times 0 0.8 uh 0 0.2 raised to the power of three minus three that will be zero so this will just be equal to one so let's just use our again trusted calculator here so you have um three ncr3 times 0.8 raised to the power of three so it will be times one okay so i forgot to use the times okay, so times so that will be 0 0.5112 so that will be 0 0.5112 okay so now we will get the total probability of passing at least two subjects okay so that will be at least two so that will be independent events so we have p passing two or three so that is two or three that will be p2 plus p3 and this will be equal to 0 0.384 plus 0 0.512 and this now will be equal to so the six nine eight so 0 0.896 so the prob probability of passing at least two subjects in an engineering board exam is 89.6% or 0 0.896. And this now will be the answer. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And as always, enjoy learning.